Today we're going to look at exercise 18. With exercise 18, we're actually going to look at how to create a sweep uh, with multiple guide curves. And so let's take a look at this. Basically, if you look at the manual, you'll see that uh, we're going to start off with drawing what they call the path. It's just a vertical line. And then secondly, we're going to go ahead and draw some guide curves for the front and for the right side profile. And then we'll go ahead and put in an ellipse at the base for our profile. And we'll see how all that works. Now if you use the dimensions as shown here, you'll get a bottle exactly according to what I have. Uh, I don't require that though. You could kind of uh, use your own judgment. You don't have to use all these dimensions. You can make any sort of bottle you like. So let's begin. First of all, we'll go to start a new document. And I'm going to start on my front plane and start a sketch and take the line tool and draw a vertical line. I next want to dimension that. So I'll dimension that at 8 inches high. This is going to be our path. And we can hit rebuild. That's the key to get out of that sketch. And in this case, I'll actually call this, or by renaming it, the path. The path helps contr will, contr help will, con will be there to help control the actual height of the part. The next thing we're going to do is we'll select the front plane once again and start another sketch. And we'll use the spline tool. And with the spline tool, you want to make sure that you align yourself to the base. You can see I'm inferring to the origin. That's good. Be a, a distance away from it. Click and begin to draw the profile of your bottle. And when you reach the top, hit Escape. One last thing you want to do is be sure to align the two parts at the base. So hold Control and select both the origin and the end point of your spline. And make sure that they're set to horizontal so they're aligned horizontally. And hit rebuild. And now we'll edit that name there and that's going to be a guide curve. And we'll call it the front view. All right. Once you hit rebuild, make sure you're out of it. Now we'll go ahead and we'll rotate this a little bit and we'll select the right plane and start a sketch. And actually maybe it's not a bad idea to go normal too. And now you're going to draw what the, the front of the bottle would look like. So use the spline again and align yourself to the origin. This one's not going to be quite as far out because the bottle is going to be narrow when we look from the right side. So we'll go ahead and just infer and click and start generating the profile. And then hit escape. Question sometimes comes up, do these points all need to be aligned to one another? No, they don't. Um, they'll only go as far as the, uh, actually as the path, which was the vertical line we drew. And one last thing, make sure you hold control and select both the origin and the endpoint of, uh, of the spline and make sure they're horizontal as well. And hit rebuild. It's not a bad idea at this point to maybe go to an isometric view. And now zoom up near the bottom. And actually before we go any further, let's rename this. guide curve right view okay and now we could go ahead and select the top plane since we drew everything off of the origin and made sure that they were all horizontally aligned we could s select this plane to start our sketch and we'll find the ellipse tool 
And once you have the ellipse, the way it works is you find the center, or the origin in this case, which is our path, click and drag out, holding the left mouse button, this what looks like a circle. Draw it beyond the boundaries of your splines. You don't want it to actually contact them just yet because it will make it a little, a little challenging to apply the relations that you'll see in a second. So once you click, you'll see you have a circle. Then move your pointer to this side and click again, and you could drag it in a little bit. And then release. And then hit Escape. Now we have our ellipse. What we want to do next is take the points, the four points that make up this ellipse on the outer rim, and add a relation. The way you do this is, first of all, uh, hold Control, select one of the, the points on the ellipse, and then find the relative spline to it, but don't select the end point of the spline. I repeat, do not select the end point of the spline, like right here, do not. You want to select just above it. In other words, you're selecting the whole spline itself versus the endpoint. If you select the endpoint, you'll limit yourself. Uh, in, in other words, it's going to just look at that endpoint and add a, allow you to add a coincident relationship, which we don't want. We want a pierce. So go ahead and select pierce. Okay, and once you've applied the pierce relation, hit the green check mark. And basically, what that does, it doesn't just look at the endpoint; it looks at the whole guide curve or rail to sweep along later on. Now let's do the same thing. We'll repeat those steps. Select this point here, and then hold control, and select the curve. Do not select the end point. And find Pierce. Now you'll see it should turn black if everything is related properly. Now you could hit rebuild. That's a key. You have to make sure you get out of the sketch somehow. Either exit sketch or rebuild does it quickly. Let's zoom out here, and now let's try and sweep it. To, to do a sweep here, we find the sweep boss base. First thing it's looking for is the profile, that's the ellipse. The next thing it's looking for is the path. The path was our vertical line. Now over on the left here, you're going to have to open this up, the guide curves. Click on the little arrow and select both curves that you generated and you will begin to see it will conform symmetrically to this geometry and that's because um, with the ellipse the ellipse always maintains uh, a symmetry between all those corners we can hit apply and there is our part okay the next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and add a new type of fillet. Let's go to the fillet tool and what we're looking for is variable radius fillet. Select the edge and it will break it up into four quadrants. First thing you could do over here is click on this unassign, double click on the text and assign it. In this case we'll go ahead and put in 0.35 and then click on the gray area of the variable radius text. Now select the next one. This one's going to be a smaller radius. This is only going to be 0 0.125. And then you could drag this and move it out of the way if you need to. Then click on this dot and set this to 0.35. Click on the gray area to apply it. And then finally this one on the bottom and set that to 0.125 again hit the gray to apply it. Hit the green check mark and you've just added a variable radius fillet. Okay, moving along, let's go ahead and um, put a neck on the bottle. Select the top face, start a sketch, take the circle tool, align it to the center and go ahead and extrude that after you put in a diameter alright let's apply a variable thickness shell 
In this case, the neck of the bottle has to be thicker because people are going to be tightening a cap on there. We don't want it to fold or break off, versus the rest of the bottle will be thinner. So let's go ahead and apply that now. So what we could do here is we could go to Shell, and we'll actually keep it at uh, 0 0.06 for the bulk of the bottle. Select the top base to open up, and then over here we have Malta Thickness Settings click in this box and let's set it to 0.125 in there and now you just have to select the face you want to be different from the others in this case the neck you can see the little digits appear hit the apply button and let's go ahead and see a cross-sectional view click on section and you should be able to see the, the difference in thickness be aware that if you put a fillet in here ahead of time, it might not work. Um, so that's why I left the fillet off until I put the until I changed the shell. And I'll go ahead and turn off that. I'll put a little fillet on there right now, and another one over here. Okay, as for the uh, geometry in the center, um, if you want to put a little design that's embossed versus our last bottle, we made an engraved label recess. But if you want it to be raised up, it's a little, diff little bit different step. And it's actually not a bad idea to roll, use the rollback bar here on the left and drag it up above the shell. So you actually are going to apply this before it's shelled out. And what you want to do is select the front view, start your sketch, Go normal to, and you can put in your little design. Okay, go to features, extrude boss, and instead of blind, we want offset from surface, and we select the surface that we want to offset from. Maybe hit reverse offset, and also make sure you change this to point zero. Actually, make it 100 thousands high. And hit the reverse offset switch right here. And you'll begin to see the raised embossed surface. And it follows the contour of the bottle. I'm actually going to change the color of my bottle. I'm going to go to the Tools Options. And under Document Properties, Colors, Shading, we could go ahead and apply something a little bit brighter. All right, and that is pretty much it. Oh, we can take the rollback bar and drag it back down. And the reason why I rolled that up above the shell is because if we tried to do it now and we did the extrude, we would actually have this geometry on the inside of the bottle. Let me slice through so you could see. I'll flip this. And here you can see the actual recess in there. That would have actually been a solid from the center, which was this, the front plane extruded out and so it would not be a very good shelled effect. Um, you would have had material on the inside that you would have had to trim away. Sometimes you can't get away without doing it that way, but um, in this case we can because it's a ra rather simple part. And that finishes this lesson, exercise 18.